Welcome to the second part of what is, has been a wonderful start to India uh, Day at the London Fashion Week. There's something a little bit different from the usual on these catwalks. When people talk about discovering themselves in India or uh, the discovery of India itself, it's usually in the context of finding their spirituality in our ancient rituals, our temples, our food, and for the very flexible amongst us, our yoga. But little do they realize that a little bit of India is with them every day. Since the time of the Silk Route, the soul of Indian women has found its way to every closet and runway across the globe, from the high street to couture, and reflected in the designs, the embroidery, and materials that are now core to the world of fashion. India is a diverse country, and our women wrap their identity in what they wear. We are strong, elegant, empowered, warm, and hospitable, and what we wear every day to work, weddings and the funerals is perhaps the most purest form of the discovery of India about who we are and the core of our culture. My name is Maitri Sita Raman, I head Fortune Magazine's Most Powerful Women International and I was absolutely honoured to ask to host this wonderful showcase which is not led by designers but by the amazing strong women at the High Commission of India and it's an amazing opportunity to highlight what our diaspora does across the world and of course what we wear and showcasing India and its backbone in six yards. We kick off with a short message from the Indian Minister of Textiles, Mrs. Smriti Iran. Welcome to India Day. Today you will see a splendid display of countless hours of craftsmanship. Thousands of weaves bring to you the rich diversity of Indian textiles. The sari is not only a cloth, not only a significant reflection of our textile legacy, it is also a matter of Indian pride. I hope that this event, organized to ensure that you come closer to the richness of Indian textiles, leaves you with countless memories and possibilities to visit us soon in India. very Indian stuff. We like talking a lot before we show things that we're really good at. So please welcome to the runway the woman leading this event, this evening's showcase, Her Excellency High Commissioner of India, Mrs. Ruchi Kancha. Thank you so much, Maitri. It's really a pleasure to have you here hosting this evening. It's a great honor to have all of you here. Lord Ahmad, Lady Ahmad, Lord and Lady Gadia, Excellencies, former MEPs, and dear friends. Today I hope that you enjoy as much as we all enjoyed the out, outputs of the young designers of INIFD. I hope you also enjoy viewing saris from different parts of India. This is a labor of love, as was said by Maitre. These are all saris from our respective wardrobes, including mine. And it is not a professional show. This is just something that we have put together to introduce the richness of India's textiles, most importantly, the sari, which is a part, so much a part of our living heritage and a part of our daily lives. I hope you really enjoy. Through this event, we hope to also pay a very warm tribute and our uh, salute to the Indian weavers, whose enormous labor and tradition, genius, scientific, uh, exploration, technology, everything is what is responsible for the, the beautiful creations that we see in different colors, different weaves, different designs that we cannot tire of wearing day in and day out. So a very warm uh, salute to our viewers and thank you so much for coming here today. check if that mic's working because I'm going to need it. It's going to be a long show. We've got 17 amazing pieces and we're going to begin our discovery of India, of that vast, diverse nation, starting in the north and we'll slowly make our way south. <laughs> Kashmir Sosni 
Lloyd reflects not just the beauty of the Paradise State, but is one of the most sophisticated forms of needle embroidery in the world. It takes almost six months to complete a single sari covered in elaborate motifs in satin stitch, which look identical on either side of the cloth with this delicate needlework that is so very unique to the wonderful state of Kashmir. Fulkari, simply translated, means flower work. This stunning embroidery is spun on traditional spinning wheels called chakras, and geometrical patterns uses floss silk thread with colored silk darning work on the inside of every cloth. It can be found in everything from saris to shawls and stoles, and space is firm in the history of vibrant Punjab as it's integral in weddings across the state for the status of families determined by the number of Bulgari items a bride is given. From the land of Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore, in West Bengal comes the Katha. One of the oldest styles of embroidery from the region of Bolpur Shantinaketan, it is defined by a running stitch, handmade by women, and the designs inspired by everyday life, reflected in the flora, fauna, and people, depicted in what is a laboriously made, but beautiful to own, six yards. <laughs> The delicate work of Chicken Kari reflects and epitomizes the elegance of the home of Muslim royalty, the Nawabs, and the city of grace, Lucknow. This 400-year-old tradition is of hand embroidery, which is extremely super fine. The intricate carving designs use white thread embroidered on pastel, lightweight fabrics like muslin, silk, and chiffon, and also sometimes even organza. The origins all trace back to the 17th century when the Mughal Empress Nur Jahan is believed to have introduced it. We move east now. The Mikla Chador is the traditional attire of women in Assam, a beautiful state in eastern India. This sari, unlike most, comprises of two pieces of cloth, draped on the top and the bottom of the body. The bottom half is called the Mikla, which is cylindrical and worn waist down over a petticoat. The Chador is what you see on top, tucked into the Mikla and draped around the upper portion of the body. We return to West Bengal by the Badujari Sari, characterized by the intricate weaving in the drape, with borders depicting stories from ancient epics like the Mahabharata and Ramayana. These are a Bengali woman's staple on festive occasions and, of course, weddings. Making 
leading our way to the heartland of India, the Chanderi Sari is woven in its namesake district in the central state of Madhya Pradesh. Traced back to the 13th century, these were a firm favorite among central India's queens and princesses and are still considered a symbol of royalty. Taking eight days and two people to make just one sari, traditional hand weaving methods handed down through the generations are combined with the use of individual needles to create different motifs with weavers putting the same with gold, silver and copper dust. We move along to the desert state of Rajasthan that we all know and love for its rich culture, of which the Bandhani Sari created with tie and dye is such a core part of. The colors stand in stark comparison to the Arab desert and are representative of the historical valor and royal nature of its inhabitants. The word Bandhani itself is derived from the Sanskrit word Bandha, which simply translated means to tie and the art lies in dyeing a fabric tied tightly with a thread at several points to create those very brilliant patterns. Moving west, we find the sari that can be seen at every wedding in the western state of Gujarat, including mine. The origin of the Kachola sari is in the Kambak region of Gujarat. Intensely time consuming, the Kachola is woven in cotton, georgette, or silk, with unique large checks made with silk and brocade threads, which are then further tied and dyed to create the gift that every bride gets from her new mother in law as she enters her new home. Staying West, the Petni Sari is the marker for every woman in the western state of Maharashtra and you'll see it quite often in cities like Mumbai. Made in its namesake town, the Petni Sari is hand woven from fine silk and zari. In ancient days, the borders and drape were created from pure gold mixed with copper. You'll see a strong Buddhist influence in the motifs since the weavers live in close proximity to the famous Ajanta Caves and its designs. Beginning the journey south, we start with the Pochum Palisari made in its namesake village in the Telangana state. A little village with over 5,000 looms produced this textile and that little village has even found a place in the UNESCO tentative list of World Heritage Sites as part of the iconic Sari weaving cluster of India. Lightweight and perfect for the human heat, its rich colors are marked with traditional geometric patterns and a vibrant contrast of color between the body and the drape. Heading further south, we discover the Bangalore silk. Famous for the purity of material, meticulously produced in the silk farms of Bangalore in Karnataka, which were introduced by Jibshaji Tata, the founder of the Indian conglomerate, the Tata Group. A firm favorite for office wear, these are lightweight and a lustrous quality that screams tradition, but with designer drapes that stand in contrast to the body's traditional feel.
the magnificent Ganji Varam Sari are the statement saris owned by every woman in the southern state of Tamil Nadu and a must for every bride. Handmade in the town of Kanchipuram, this sari can be traced back to the origins of the silk trade by the Chola dynasty more than a thousand years ago. Mulberry silk is intricately used with gold and silver brocade and stands for pure luxury even today. Patterns hop back to ancient scriptures and temples but sometimes include flora, fauna and the traditional paintings of Vedic epics. Women in God's own country, Kerala, can be identified clearly by their use of the traditional Kasabu Sari. Restrained elegance is on display with its traditional cream color and rich gold brocade. The Kasabu specifically only refers to the intricate gold brocade border and its use is heavy during religious ceremonies and during the Hindu New Year, when purity and spirituality is reborn and the journey of the discovery of India and Indians begins afresh. is the quintessential Bengali sari, almost the identifying mark of a Bengali woman. A plain red border on a white or off-white silk body, the color is a symbol of purity. Most were woven in a district called Roshat Mutidabad in West Bengal. The closely woven silk yarns, made of dusser or mulberry silk, give it a fine texture and leave it undyed a natural color. Being a symbol of purity, historically, this is what queens and landowners wore for religious occasions, which is still the norm today. discovery of India by going back west. In the ancient city of Varanasi, where the silk sari considered the pinnacle of hand weaving. It is for an Indian woman what a Birkin bag is to fashionistas and part of every North Indian bride's trousseau. Originally crafted only for royalty, each Banarasi takes a year to make. In fine silk with embroidery in real gold and silver and motifs in brocade silk sari. Banaras brocades and saris did get the geographical indication rights in 2009, securing protection for these beautiful artisanal works.
just get to stand here and hang out. That's perfect. Right, so thank you so very much for joining us. And I know uh, the High Commissioner has organized a wonderful dinner that we hope that you will join us for at the High Commission. It's about a six-minute walk if you're graded in the weather. I promise you it will be worth it. Good night.